glad for to have you back and it is still TV's breakfast and we are moving on to the second leg of our discussion this morning. We are talking about bank rate. Yeah. You can see that behind you there, really. <laughs> it's interesting. That's you and I are just uh, are going down under the weight of the charges here. So the rate of bank interest and charges in an economy go a long way in determining the growth potential and development of a country. Now, high interest rates are believed to be the bane of progress and development in Nigeria. TVC News correspondent Efion Ekob fastened this report. Interest rates is important in developing an economy. Many countries willfully manipulate interest rates and charges in ways to achieve desired national goals. In Nigeria, interest rates are generally high. The Central Bank of Nigeria's prime lending rate has been benchmarked at 14% since November 2016 by the monetary authorities claiming a focus on macroeconomic management. Down the line, Bank charges and other rates get as high as 30% in many loan deals and contracts. Some Nigerian business operators, especially manufacturers and small-scale business developers, have argued that current interest rate charges by banks cannot enhance growth. They have gone a step further to accuse these banks of stalling individual and corporate initiatives as they shy away from funding such ventures. Interest rate has, uh, has gone really up. For example, in the uh, in government securities market like Treasury bills, you've seen a uh, you've seen a rate go as high as 22 percent, and what that means that banks themselves cannot cannot lend at a rate below 30 uh, 30 percent. That's not good for for uh, manufacturers or uh, other ag economic agents in Nigeria. Public outcries against high interest rates now force the leadership of the Nigerian Senate to propose a meeting with bankers and other interest groups to appeal for restraint. While Nigerian banks hesitate to fund businesses with long gestations, their counterparts in Kenya accept farmlands, poultry farms, computers, and electronic appliances as collaterals for loans. Analysts say that such widespread network ensure even development of the economy as many customers are brought into the banking corridor. If young Echo, TVC News, Lagos. Okay, so joining us right now is an economist, uh, B.C. Yaniwura. Uh, many thanks for joining us today. You were so eager to even come in on the South Africa <laughs> issue there. And uh, really, it, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Economy is alive, really. Yeah. But tell us, what is your take on the high interest rate? Okay, uh, good morning. First, let me... I'm not an economist. I'm a financial analyst. Yes. Mm. Yeah. You see, let's first look at the fundamentals of banking. Mm -hmm. What is the role of banks? I always tell people an economy can survive without banks but cannot survive without banking. The banks are the institutions that make banking possible. Now let's look at interest rate. Interest rate is a very fundamental element of production. When the interest rate is high, it discourages investment. It discourages people from taking risk. Because risk element is a major factor of entrepreneurship. I was just I conducted an interview yesterday with somebody and he said he will never touch bank loan with a poor length, whatever it is. Because particularly in Nigeria, the entrepreneur is an endangered species. You see, unlike what we have in some other economy where you can use non-tangibles as security, hypothetication and all these ones, we don't use it in Nigeria. I can remember when I started my farm, I approached the Nigerian Agri uh, Bank and I said, look, I have 80 acres of land. I need to take 20 million to develop the bank. I've invested so much. They said, no, I have to bring another property in addition to the farm. And I said, look, if I have the other property to bring, why don't I just sell that bank mm. instead of me putting it as a risk? If I sell the, the property, I know I'm taking a risk on myself. Now, let's look at the causes of the high interest rate. Some of the causes are one, structural causes, because we actually do not have the financial structure to do proper banking in Nigeria. The banks do profit taking, they don't do banking. The government has allowed the bank to do so much of fee takings. If you go to Europe, a lot of the fees, the charges, ATM and all these things, they are not applicable. I argue with my bank sometimes back, I wanted to do a transfer. They said, I'm, I said 60,000, I said no, anything below 100,000, I have to go to the ATM. I said, look, I should have the right of how I want to be served. Mm. All right. They said they would deduct, I said, let me see any deduction, then you know I'm also a lawyer. 
it is consumer protection that the government should be looking at. But it seems the government is more interested in protecting the banks. Yes, maybe because they employ some reasonable percentage of the people. But looking at the whole economy, what percentage of the people does the bank employ? Okay, mm. but... Oh, 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 okay, maybe before you go ahead, let, we, we have a lineup of some of the interest rates in some of NPR in some of the oh, uh, countries. developing countries. Yeah, mm. Bra Brazil has about 10.5%. Yes. Kenya is about 10%. South Africa, 7%. Rwanda, 6.25%. Botswana, 5.5%. Cameroon is as good as just about 2.5%. Uh, in, in, in all of this, if we... In bring, Nigeria, we have 14%. In Nigeria, we have 14%. That's the prime lending rate. Exactly. No, so, so in this, what, is, what are these countries doing that Nigeria is not doing? One, the, uh, you see, in Nigeria... You, if you read two, three weeks ago, the CBN even came out to say that even the federal government is overborrowing. Mm. You see, the government is stiffening out the private sector from the fund market. So the competition for local fund becomes higher. And nobody can beat the government when it comes to borrowing because they are guilt edge borrowers. But can we explain the difference between what we have in the NPR and the lending rate? With what CBN will lend to a bank is different from what you, the mm. commercial bank, will lend to you as the end users. Okay, let's, let's look at the, the, the Nigerian physical structures. You in your house, you are a government. You have your generator, you have your bowl. Mm. Same thing with the banks. We provide security for they ourselves. They provide securities for themselves. <laughs> these are overhead, which in some of these countries, they don't carry. Okay. Also, I'm not supporting the banks because I'm a victim. I think the government should also look at the remuneration of banks, that, that as was done in Europe and America. A lot of these banks, quote and unquote, take arm robbery salaries and allowances. No, I'm not joking. You see a bank, I was involved with a bank that was struggling and they have a change of management. And the first thing the directors and they bought for themselves were at G level Mercedes Benz. For a bank that is it's struggling. struggling. You now see microfinance banks competing with commercial banks. These are the overheads that the CBN should look at instead of just allowing unreasonable charges. All right, let's look at the inflation rate. A yeah. bank cannot lend lower than what the inflation rate is. That yes. is just common economics yes. because it has to make profit. Yes. So that's where the monetary policy comes in now. I mean, the, the fiscal policy comes, comes in. in. How can the government make the environment good enough for the bank? If the inflation rate comes down, the bank may be able to uh, lend at a lower rate. Okay, I, you are not right to say that the bank cannot lend below no. inflation rate. Okay. It is not ideal. It's, it, it could be done by fiat, mm. but it is not ideal because it means that the, 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 the depositors will have a negative interest rate. But what are the determinants of inflation? In the current situation in Nigeria, inflation is actually driven not by monetary position, but by government physical position, devaluation. The increase in the price, pump price of fuel. Those were the two things that actually trigger inflation when this government came in. They ought not to have done the two so close to each other. We don't have the capacity to absorb this. But yeah, back to my point. Yeah. If you are lending to a, a person, you are lending to make some level of profit, yes. and inflation rate reflects the cost of, of, of doing business, your, the, 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 your purchasing power, Everything has to be reflective in, in what the bank will give to, to, to give their credit to customers. Yes. Shouldn't that be reflective? It should be reflected, which I agree with you. But let me ask a okay, question. You agree with me now, but you disagree with me earlier. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the, the use of your term. You okay. said, I said a bank could lend because the government could force or, and say this is the rate you should lend, which happened during the military era when uh, the current president was a military head of state. Mm -hmm. But it will create what we call backyard Great. banking. Now to come to the last question, you see, if the banks do not have, because it's a circle, it is because, because the bank have alternative avenue to put the money into. The government treasury bills, government securities are too juicy for the banks to want to take a risk. If you see somebody who is coming to your house and say, look, you don't need to work, I give you 100, 100,000 every month, do you want to work? Mm. Oh, oh, all right. Uh, there, there's a statement credited to the Minister of Agriculture, uh, Aldo Ogbe, who says that in about two weeks from now, from today, that the prices of, of food is going to crash. If we have all these rates that are retained wherever they are, how likely is that? My brother, I'm into farming. Mm. I want to see how the minister will make that happen. Yes, we are pushing the seasons, but what are the determinants of price? 
the cost of plowing has gone up because we don't have enough tractors. The cost of labor is because we predominantly depend on Togolese for our labor. They said because of the Nigerian exchange rate, a lot of them are not coming in. So as we are talking like this, I was just thinking, I had to rush in to come and do something. I have to be back on my farm today or tomorrow because we are having crisis of labor. The cost of chemicals that we use has more than double because mm. of the exchange rate. Transport? Uh, no, don't let you even go that. Because 80% <laughs> of the loss in the agricultural sector is related to logistics. I was in a meeting two days ago and I said, look, if we could handle our post harvest issues properly, Nigeria has no issue with anything. Look at palm oil. Last two or three weeks, 25 keg was selling for 8,000. Because it's going off season, it's now going to off 12,000, 13,000. So if you say the price is going to fall, it will fall when it is in season. But does the government have the ability to create a buffer so that when it is off season, we can maintain the same price mm -hmm. equilibrium? That okay. is it. So if, perhaps if that happens, then some okay. level of, uh, of tweak may go on with our inflation rate, really, when you have food. Structural, so structural adjustment may go on and you have some level of... Uh, for the period, for, for for the the period. period of harvest. Okay, Just but like, quickly, yeah. we are wrapping up the session right now. Yeah. Let's look at the issue of risk. Yes. Why bank may want to increase their interest rate because of risk, risk on the terms of repayment and solvency of some of those loans. When loan, loans go back, repayment rate in Nigeria is not that fantastic when it comes to borrowing people. I money. want to disagree with you okay. about that. I did a lot of work for some banks in recovery. We want to find out which is CBN and then NDIC themselves okay. said that most of these unrecovered loans are insiders related loans. Okay. Who are the insiders? The directors of the bank. Okay. So they cannot shoot themselves. They cannot sanction themselves. I think what the CBN should do and NDIC is one, mandate it that no director of any bank should actually take facilities from his bank because they have a way of maneuvering. They use companies and all these things. Insiders related loans are actually what is killing the banking industry. If I take a loan, they will come after my properties. Mm. If you take a loan, they will come after your properties. But believe you, I've seen a situation where the MD of a bank is owing that bank over 10 billion naira. Mm. The boards are afraid. The chairman is owing about 20, 30 billion naira. The boards are afraid to go after him. So that's where the problem is. So you're saying the little, little man out there who borrows money, they are not the they, risk. They pay, they pay back they their pay, money. Yeah, they effective. are not the risk. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, financial analyst BC Yaniwura, thank you very much for coming it's on the program. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's go on a break, and when we come back, will be time for us to go for the news update, and then we get into our next discussion. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast. <laughs>